Hey, before we get started building out this split section design, I wanted to let you know I have a plugin that makes all of this a lot easier and gives you a bunch of additional functionality. This is kind of what we're going to be building today with content on one side and background image on the other side. But the plugin allows you to do two pieces of content right next to each other. You can change the width, you can change the height, however you want. You can also add these borders in between like they do on apple.com over here. You have these little blocks like that. Uh, you can also do static and scrolling sections like this. Uh, right there so this 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 stays the same right here and you can just scroll and read the content right there if you wanted to do that you can also add in a gallery section if you wanted to do that as well with some content over here so that's what my more advanced plugin allows that's sort of the pro version but today we're gonna be working on this free version and showing you just how to set up a simple split section design so I'm going to go change clothes and meet you out on the patio all right, so let's talk about some examples of split section designs. I'm on the Envision app, which is a design software. If you haven't used it before, I don't really use it, but they do a good bunch of content. And so there's just this article that talks, shows a bunch of examples. You should check it out if you are interested in using split section designs on your website. Um, and this is basically what we're doing. We want to do like an image, uh, image on one side and then content on the other. We can do that relatively simply in Squarespace 7.0. One. So that is what we're going to do, sort of an image over here, content over here. And just to show you, the, the final the final what we're going to be building is this. You can have, this is my website, you got a couple links down here, and you got the image over here and the content right here. So that's what we're going to be building. So let's just start initially with my page. So it's kind of hard to read the text because I have uh, black text over it. So let's change maybe the colors to a dark minimal or something. Maybe that'll make it a little bit easier to see. Actually, let's go back to white and then change the background of the section. Let's give it a, a th oh, more transparent, uh, more white overlay. I'm going to actually switch this up to maybe accent dark. What does that look like? That's a little bit more readable, so let's just leave it at that. So this is what I want. I want my content right here all of this to be over here on the left and my image, the background, to be over here on the right. So the first thing we want to get into is the structure of a Squarespace section in 7.1. So if we look at, if I pull up this page, let's just refresh it so we're, we're getting what we actually have right now. Uh, if I right click on the page and we look at the code, what we're going to see, we're going to see these sections so this is a squarespace section right here here's another squarespace section here's another section each section is comprised of two main child elements so if i click on my section right here and hit this drop down on the section you'll see we got a section background a div with a section background and a div with a content wrapper so that is how it is broken up this section's broken up so let's get started we want to just first select the the unique identifier of this first section because this for right now this is the only section we want this to apply to. So I still have my my uh, web inspector pulled up over here. If I scroll to the top of this section, so this is the section you know I'm highlighting the right one. I'm selecting the right one. I'm looking for this data section ID. So I'm gonna double click on all of this, copy all of that, and bring it over here into my custom CSS area. I'm going to add in these square brackets and opening and closing square brackets and then paste that in. Now whatever styles I apply, I'll do my opening and curly, opening and closing curly brackets, whatever styles I apply are going to apply only to this section. So maybe we want to say uh, this maybe is our H4 text, I'm not entirely sure, and we'll change it to red and we'll close it out and we'll throw in an important tag maybe it's not h4 maybe it's h3 there we go so this h3 it's only being applied the color is only being applied there because we have our data section id up here so only on this section are these properties being applied so now we know we've selected the right data section now let's grab our two child elements that we just talked about our section background and our content wrapper and let's give them a width of 50% because each one only needs to take up 50% of the screen so since I'm selecting a class since these are classes over here you see div class equals section background so I'm gonna do a dot because it's a class paste that in section dash background and just say let's just say width 50% right 
Okay, so we're starting to get some movement. You see the image just changed to five, but you see all that content is still there. So we also want our class of the next section, this content wrapper. So again, I'm gonna grab this content wrapper, dot content wrapper with 50%. And because of the way it is laid out, the content wrapper is gonna be in the middle of the screen. That's why you see it shrunk here. If I get rid of it, you can see that it shrunk, but it's already positioned in the center of the screen. So that's why it's right there. So next we need to play around with the margins here. So that's gonna be our next thing. So we know our margins, they, all of our, everything here is, it's, this is, think about it inside of a box and we have our content right here. Then the next layer outside of that box is our padding. And then we have a border if we wanted to apply a border and then our margins and our margins can sort of push things around and move them around on our page outside, outside of whatever content this is. So I want to give this background right here, a margin left of 50%. So I want this image right here to be pushed over to the right because we're giving it a left, a spacing, a margin of left of 50%. So if I just add that in over here, margin dash left 50%, it is going to push it over to that side. And then if we do our content wrapper over here, margin dash right 50%, nothing's going to happen. And that's because we already have a margin set on this. There's already a margin set here. And you can actually see it if we go over here uh, to our live site. You'll see if I click our content wrapper over here, if we scroll down, we can see we have a margin zero auto. So that one's already set. So we need this margin, the margin we're creating here to override it. So we can do this important tag and let's see if that does it. Boom, there we go. So now we have overridden the property that was already there by adding this important tag. But this isn't really something I like doing. Um, like doing in general, like adding an important tag, you sort of want to be more descriptive here with your selector. Uh, but just for right now, for simplicities, we're just going to keep this important tag in there. So you can see the content is there, but it is impossible to see. So let's change around the colors a little bit so we can see what's happening. So I'm going to get into my editor, hit our section editor there, go to colors, and we'll just change it to, uh, let's just do light bold. How about that'll, uh, let's just do, I want it a little bit darker than that gray. There we go. And now I'm going to save that. And now we're starting to see things a little bit better. So this might look good, but the problem is let's look at this on mobile. Eh, that doesn't look too good. So let's jump into fixing that. So this is where we're going to apply our min width media query over here. So that's uh, what we want to do is first we have, notice we have our selector here. This is our section selector. And then within that, apply all of these properties only to this one section. We want to do a similar thing. We want to nest another layer with inside of this. So I'm going to say at media and then in parentheses min width, min width, and let's say 767 pixels. So I'm, and then if I do my opening and curly, closing curly brackets, then move all of this content within there. Now it's the, the code that we created isn't being applied. And what this is saying is as long as the screen is larger than 767 pixels wide, as long as the screen is larger than that, apply this property. But right now the screen is smaller than 767 pixels wide. So it's not going to apply these properties. So that is what is happening right here. But you see if I go big screen, boom, there it is. Small screen, not there. But let's add one other thing. Maybe I don't want this background image to be there. Maybe it's like a picture of me and text over me. It just, it doesn't look great. That's not what I want. So we can add a mobile media query. So the exact opposite of this one. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to see where it ends. If I click on this opening bracket, it'll show you it turns green. This one turns green where it closes. So I'm going to hit enter and add in the same thing down there, opening and closing curly brackets. And then we're going to change this to max width. So again, the opposite of this, as long as the screen isn't larger than 767 pixels, let's apply these properties. And what I want to do is I want to give our section background here. I want to give this a display or a position 
of relative. And so this is actually happening because we, we've, dis we've positioned our section background, and we, we actually want to do the same to our content wrapper, but we're not really going to see anything else change here. You can also add multiple properties to the same selectors by just adding a comma there. And so there's our class selector of content wrapper, class selector of section background you can add. So there's a fun little tip. Um, but this position relative, this isn't really working because the parent element, which is this section right here, it, is, it doesn't have a display. So if we, if we, let's save our properties here and then let's refresh it over here. And let's look at our mobile here. Well, I, I should say it does have a display. It doesn't have the right display. So if I click on my section here, you can see all the CSS elements that are applied to it. If we keep scrolling down, we'll see it has a display of flex. And so that means the items within it, the content wrapper and the section background, they're going to flex within side to side. They're going to flex side to side depending on the width of the screen. You can see if I change this to responsive, they're going to grow with the screen as the screen grows. Um, and that's, that's not really what we want. We want it to display a block. So one on top of the other. So I'm just going to change the display of our, of our section here to block. And that should fix it. So our media query max width 767 pixels. I don't have to add a selector here because this is already within our data section selector right here. So I'm just going to say display block. This is going to get applied. So there we go. So now we have our image on top and our content below. But that's too high, so let's add in another selector, our section background, and let's just give this a height of, say, 200 pixels. And there we go. So now that is 200 pixels high, and we have our content right below it. You can see it all on one page, exactly like we like. And then if we open this up in desktop view, we have our full half page there. Okay, great, so this is almost perfect, but what if we wanted to change the background color? So we'd go into edit, right, and we'd go to our section right here, and we'd hit colors, and maybe we want to do a, a black background with white text. So we'd hit that, and the text changed to white, but the background doesn't change. Well, why isn't that happening? Well, you see over here as I hit that, the the color of the overlay on this image change, and that's because our section background, the, these color properties that we were just changing, are attached to our section background here. So if we wanted to change the color of the section, we can't without adding in some extra code. But luckily, it's pretty simple. All we want to do is within this, remember we're selecting our section right here. So if we just space, we just add in maybe a background color of uh, let's just say let's do like a light grayish maybe like a hashtag DDD and there we go and so that's gonna apply to the whole thing right there so you can just put in your color background right here at the top if that is what you want if you want to change the background color there all right so I hope this helps let me know if you have any other questions and again if you want to download that plugin it allows you to do a lot of other really cool things with design, split design layouts and stuff. Download that and let me know what you think.